You know, Dallas uh, is, is very similar to Detroit in a lot of ways. As a matter of fact, when I read the, uh, the news article from July 28th, if Dallas can do it, why can't Detroit? And I read the article and I thought, well, you know, there's a lot of truth in that article. If Dallas can do it, why can't Detroit? Because there are a lot of similarities. Dallas is very car-centric. We have a lot of highways. A lot of people, they love their cars and pickups and SUVs. And, uh, and when we opened in 19, that first light rail system in 1996, of course, everybody said, why are you doing this? It's crazy. People aren't going to get out of their cars. You could buy everybody a car for the price you're going to pay for this over time. You've probably heard some of those similar conversations here. And in 1996, on June 14th, the trains were packed. As Peter said, I've got mayors all over the region now saying, what about us? When are you going to get to us? As a matter of fact, we celebrated our 15th anniversary of Light Rail just this past June 14th. Two days later, we had a celebration parade for the Dallas Mavericks. And I know a lot of people across the country uh, were rooting for the Mavericks, not really because they're Mavericks fans, but because they didn't want Miami to win, I think. So, <laughs> that's okay. And, and on that day... We had 150,000 people get on the train to get to the parade. Now we had, and what, of course what the media picked up on was that we had a train break down. And there were some delays in the course of that to getting everybody out. But the story was in that single day we had 150,000 people get on the train to get to a parade and then get back home again. You know, it's about having a choice. Unlike uh, Salt Lake, we're not confined by lakes, mountains, or anything else. We have lots and lots of room to sprawl all over the place, and we do that very well. Um, and that's a challenge when you're planning a transit system. But when we started this, we had to come up with a plan. And the way we came up with that plan is we involved everybody in the community, all the different cities, and we worked together to come up with a plan. It doesn't mean everybody agreed with the plan. I mean, there were certainly a lot of opinions. There were a lot of thoughts and ideas about where it should go, where it shouldn't go. And today we have those same conversations about that next line. Well, you need to go here. You need, now, of course, it's you need to get to my community. I want a station here. And as I, as I looked at the plan and the station at 8 Mile Road, I thought, gosh, those people to the north pretty quickly are going in. It was in the paper today. Those people to the north are pretty quickly going to say, we want it to come to our community. We want to continue to extend this. We're seeing that now. We can't build it quick enough, but it started with a plan. It started with everybody getting in the room together. Now, you know, it wasn't easy. There are a few folks that didn't necessarily believe in what we're trying to do. And they're still out there. As a matter of fact, I spoke at a, a University of Texas in Dallas uh, seminar not too long ago. Um, and, uh, and one of those naysayers is a professor at that university. And when he waited until I finished my presentation, and then he raised his hand, and then he started into the same debates that he had 20 years ago. And I didn't say anything. The students said something. They said, you know, we've got to do something. We've got to do it now. We can't continue to sit back and wait for something to happen. Because if we don't do it, it won't happen. Uh, and at the end of the day, we opened that system in 96, and people got on, we expanded it, we doubled it in 2002, and now we're in the process of doubling it again. So we have uh, 72 miles on the ground today, and again, people are saying, you know, it's actually getting better, we can go places where we want to go, uh, and, and that's good, but we really want it to go more places. We want to get further out, we want it to uh, get to my community. Uh, specifically. So as we go through, the, and this is Green Line, 28 miles, 20 stations. And John touched on this. You know, as you go through this process, the credibility factor is huge. People are watching. They're skeptics. They're uh, cynics. Uh, you've got to get a plan. You've got to make sure that you've got a team that can do it, that they're focused on doing it, that the governance is all uh, set up so it, it can be controlled. Uh, and without a million people trying to help, because there's a lot of help. Trust me, we get a lot of help. Um, so there's, there's that opportunity to do that, but you've got to get that team that's very focused and, uh, and get them in place 
and then they've got to be uh, they've got to be able to deliver the project on time and on budget. When we first opened our starter system, it was on time and it was on budget. The second program was uh, a little ahead of schedule and under budget. And, and I know the FTA folks who remember this story. We went to the FTA and we said we've got a problem. And this was in 2002, and there were a lot of folks around the country that had problems in 2002. And, and they said, oh great, you know, you're over budget. No, no, actually we're under budget. Uh, but, we, but we really want to keep those funds in our region. And uh, so we worked very closely on how we could do that based on the criteria that the FTA set forth, based on the strong support from our delegation. And, and just to put that in perspective too, my delegation, my federal delegation, uh, nine uh, members of, of Congress and Senate, I've got one Democrat and the rest are Republicans. And, and so regardless of whether you're R or D, uh, we had strong support from our entire delegation to keep those funds and continue to do the things uh, from a transit perspective that we needed to do from a transportation perspective and after that uh, expansion. So the Green Line, as Peter said, uh, someone said, well, now, Gary, that you've opened the Green Line, what are you going to do? Oh, well, oh, by the way, we still have uh, about $800 million of construction going on, but that's, uh, uh, you know, that's something that people just expect to happen now. It's ongoing. We'll open this line in 2012. We'll open this line in 2012 in two phases. The line going into the FW Airport should start construction about the end of this year. It's just, you know, people expect that. They expect us to do now what we're doing, what uh, that is going to be on time, that's going to be under budget. So the real conversation is what's next.